probably one of the most useless and frustrating things on the Crown Vic is the low tire warning light. You literally do not know if you're just one PSI too low or if you're rapidly losing air and about to experience a blowout. So today we're going to figure out if we can improve on this system. I found this system on Amazon. It was about 50 bucks. I'll have a link in the description. You can see it comes with a monitor that's solar powered as well as the ability to plug into your cigarette lighter. And then four sensors to go, one on each wheel. On installation day, you're not going to need either of these. These are some O-rings if you replace batteries later on. And this is the tool that opens these up so that you can change the battery. So you want to put those in a safe spot and then have all these ready to go. So you get your dust caps and these little nuts and then the sensors. And you've got a wrench that can fit on there installation is pretty straightforward. I'm going to start by removing the cap. Take the dust shield and as far as I can tell that's the way they want it to go on. And take this lock nut and thread it all the way down. Then this is the left front tire so we got the one marked for left front. And Thread that on till it bottoms out. And then they want you to put that lock nut tight against it. Then pull the dust boot up and wrap it all the way around. Let's repeat on the other three tires. And there it is. So I've just got it plugged in right now to the cigarette lighter that's in the ashtray. I gotta decide where would be the best spot to uh, keep it permanently mounted. It has the solar panel on the top. So if you put it on the dashboard, it can recharge itself. And then what I like is you can set all these different settings to uh, you know, alert you on different things. So for example, and you have to hold the buttons down quite a while. You can go into the settings mode, so you can choose between PSI and probably something else. I'm gonna keep it on PSI because that's what I understand. <laughs> and then you have choice between Fahrenheit and Celsius. It came at Celsius, so I changed it to Fahrenheit, because again, I understand Fahrenheit temperatures, I don't understand Celsius. <laughs> and then you can set front and rear separately to alert you to high pressure and low pressure. So like here, 44 is the high. I think that's probably good. I think that's the max that you're supposed to have uh, before you have dangerous situations. So I'll leave that one there. The low was set to 29, and I changed it to 25 mainly because, like I said, if the cold temperature is causing a little bit of a fluctuation, I don't want this thing beeping at me, making me nervous while I'm driving. But if it gets down to 25 while I'm driving, that probably suggests that there's an air leak, you know, going pretty rapid as opposed to just a temperature fluctuation. Now, obviously, I don't keep my tires this low anyway but like i said i just don't want it alerting me when it drops to like 34 or something <laughs> and then same thing with the rear i put them at 44 and 25 and uh this one has a spare tire sensor but it only came with the four so uh, i'm guessing there may be an optional upgrade to have a fifth one so i didn't even mess with the spare one and then the temperature warning, 158 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll need to Google and see if that's a good setting or if that should be changed, but uh, that's what the uh, factory setting on this was, so I left it alone there. Uh, honest to God, I don't know how hot tires get when they're driving on a uh, you know, 100 degree day in Texas. I imagine they get pretty hot. 
and then when you're done with all the settings obviously it'll just keep rotating back and through them so then you just again hold the button down and then it locks in so it's showing right now 40 38 37 and 37 um, you know I don't know how accurate this is I don't know how accurate my tire gauge is when I'm filling tires I want to say I'd fill them all to 38 so it's interesting that they're reading a little bit different uh, the one downside to this setup is having these on the car if you do need to fill up your tires I don't know if you need that wrench to uh, do it or not I mean honestly just looking at the setup it looked like you could just thread those on without the backup nut and without the dust boot but I went ahead and did what they said on the instructions just in case there's a reason for why they had it that way I'm guessing the little boxes are next to them are the temperatures so it's showing 72 in the front 73 in the driver's side rear and 77 in the passenger rear which is interesting as the sun is hitting from the driver's side right now so again don't know how accurate those are but at least that's on there and I believe according to the instructions that it has a, a warning if you do start to experience a rapid pressure loss and uh, I don't really want to trigger that right now <laughs> but uh, I guess that would be nice to have. So like I said, the main thing will be figuring out where to mount this box. They give you a little pad that you can put there. I, like I said, I just I don't know that I really want it up on the dashboard, but that may be the best place for it. Just for now, just driving around, I'm probably going to just leave it there. And I don't know if you notice on there, when that little sunlight is on, that means it's doing the solar power. And you see the sun disappeared sun comes back for now I'm just gonna leave it here using strictly solar power you see even though it's about five o'clock sun's down we're still getting solar charge on it and this car basically sees sunlight all the time it's outside all the time so it should be fine and if not then I can always whip out the cable plug it into the cigarette lighter there this location is working out perfectly you see right now the screen is off and that is because it has an automatic shutdown when you're not using it so it's charging right now and not running down the battery it seems to be motion activated to turn on I'm gonna show you so what I find is it'll be off when the car's been parked and then as soon as I get in the car it turns on and the other thing I notice is like you see right now it's showing 38 on most of them 37 on one it seems like when I get in and I start driving those pressures drop drastically and then they rebound and come back so I'm guessing our roads are kind of cold right now. <laughs> Plug in your connector to the OBD port. Key on. And then connect to the vehicle. So you see the light is on. And I'm going to turn it off with the Forescan. Twelve eighty is where you have your tire pressure monitor system working, and then twelve hundred is what turns it off. And then this is the one that just had the one. So I don't know how you get to all the other settings. The seven two, and then this digit. There should be the ability to change those, but it's only letting me do the one, which this is just the uh, tire light on or off and, and when I say that I don't mean on as in always on or always off I mean when you turn it on when it senses low tire 
the light comes on. When the tires are not low, the light doesn't come on. You turn it off, then the light just never comes on.